Hi there, this is Particle Physics Lesson 4, Antimatter, Annihilation and Pair Production, part of the A-Level Physics. So what is antimatter? All particles of normal matter, such as protons, neutrons and electrons, have a corresponding particle that has the same mass as the original particle, has the opposite charge, that's if the normal particle is indeed charged, and we'll undergo annihilation with the normal particle if they meet. So, for example, if you met the the antimatter part, uh, antimatter equivalent of yourself, and you came into contact with each other, you would both annihilate, cease to exist, and turn into photons. So, if you see yourself, be careful, uh, mindful that this may happen. Just check first that they're not the antimatter equivalent, or you'll be sorry. So let's look at some examples of antimatter. So an antiproton is basically a proton, but it's negatively charged. A positron is a positively charged electron. So we don't use the term anti-electron. I know we use it for antiproton. We don't use it for the electron. It's got its own name. It's called the positron. Same as an electron, just positive. Antineutrino, uh, the exact same as a neutrino produced in beta minus decay. So that's the beta decay that we looked at last lesson. Let's move on. So annihilation. So if I get a particle and it's antiparticle equivalent and they meet. So when a particle and its corresponding antiparticle meets together, annihilation occurs. So all of their mass and kinetic energy is converted into two photons of equal frequency that move off in opposite directions. The opposite directions is to conserve linear momentum. The conservation of linear momentum is a physical law, must be upheld. If you've done momentum, you'll understand that. If not, I advise you go and look at it. Let's move on. So pair production. Remember at any point if you need to make any notes, just pause. So this is where a photon will spontaneously turn into a particle and antiparticle. So it's the opposite of annihilation. The energy of one photon, a single photon, which is important, can be used to create a particle and its corresponding antiparticle. And then the photon ceases to exist after the pair production event. So if you need to make notes, remember just to pause. Let's move on. So the electron volt. So this is a very important concept for A-level physics. So the electron volt is equal to the kinetic energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated by a potential difference of one volt. So if you remember back to GCSE physics, or if you've done electricity at A-level, you will know that energy gain is equal to charge times potential difference, or voltage. So the charge of an electron, which you'll know from previous lessons, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, multiplied by... Potential difference of one volt. So obviously 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times one gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules of energy. So that is one electron volt, one EV. Exam questions like to give you, you know, quantities in electron volts and turn it into joules or vice versa. You may get it in joules and have to turn it into electron volts. We'll practice both of these though. So let's move on. So first of all, calculate the energy in electron volts of a photon of orange light of frequency 4.7 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So you need to use stuff from previous lessons. Have a go at that and then I'll take you through it. So energy is related to frequency via the equation E equals HF. Planck's constant from previous lessons is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds and then multiply by the frequency that's given. So 4.7 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That gives us an energy which is equal to 3.1161, 3.1161 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And we need to know how many electron volts that is. So what we need to do is to take that number, 3.1161 times 10 to the minus 19, 
and see how many electron volts go into it. So we need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that gives us 1.95 electron volts. Hopefully that's okay. Let's move on. So this time backwards. So if you want to pause this and have a go. A photon energy. A photon has energy of 3 electron volts. Calculate the wavelength. So first of all we need to change the 3 electron volts into joules. So that's 3 electron volts multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Which gives us an energy in joules of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Then we need to get wavelength. So from the previous lesson, energy is equal to Hc over the wavelength. So wavelength would be Hc over the energy which we just calculated. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the energy 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19. So put that in our calculator, that gives us a wavelength of 4.14 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Just as a bonus question, if you want to pause. Do you know what colour light that is? So the 414 times 10 to the minus 7. If you press engineer on your calculator, it will give you 414 times 10 to the minus 9. So that's a wavelength of 414 nanometers. Now if you remember, the range of light is 400 to 700 nanometers. So this is the the shorter side, or higher energy, so that would be the blue side, so violet slash blue side. Just a bit of revision, let's move on. Particle rest energy. So using Einstein's relation equals mc squared, E being the energy in joules, m is mass in kilograms, and C is the speed of light in meters per second, so using Einstein's relation equals mc squared, the energy equivalent of mass can be calculated. The masses of subatomic particles are commonly quoted in energy terms using the unit MeV, which stands for mega electron volts, so a million electron volts, essentially. So we need to calculate the rest mass energy equivalence of a proton in MeV. And I want you to use the value 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilos. So just pause and have a go at that. And then let's have a look at the answer. So we use E equals mc squared. So the mass is the 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. Multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared, which is 9 times 10 to the 16. So that gives us an energy in joules of 1.503 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. Then we just need to turn it into electron volts. So to turn that into electron volts, we need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. But it wants it in mega electron volts, so when we get that number, we then need to divide by a million. Or divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. Which gives an approximate value in MeV for the rest mass energy of a proton of 900 and 39. I don't know why I've done that. Give me one second. 939 MeV. Hopefully that went okay. So let's move on. So annihilation question. So please try and remember what we've what we've talked about and what you've written down in your notes. I want you to attempt this one. I'll take you through it. So annihilation calculation. Calculate the minimum energies of the photons produced by the annihilation of a proton and antiproton. And then what will be the wavelength of these photons? So the proton has a rest mass energy of 938.257 mega electron volts. And there's two of them. So we will just multiply this by two. But then the photons that are produced, there will be two photons. So then we'd have to divide by two. 
So the amount of energy for each photon, each single photon, would be 938.257 MeV. And then what would the wavelength be? So we need to convert this into joules. And then use the equation e equals hc over lambda. So to get it straight into joules, we need to multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. And it's minus 13 because we're going for mega. And that would give us 1.501 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. Then we just need to use e equals hc over lambda. So lambda would be hc over e. And then just put our numbers in. So we'll try and fit this in here. So it'd be H is Planck's constant. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8. And then divide by the energy, the 1.501 times 10 to the minus 10. And that gives us a wavelength of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Hopefully that's okay, let's move on from there. Pair production calculation. So let's have a go at this one. Just have a think, pause the video. Calculate the minimum photon energy in joules required to produce an electron-positron pair. And then calculate the frequency of the emitted gamma photon. So if you remember back to what we discussed earlier and what should be in your notes, it takes a single photon to produce the electron and the positron together. So the energy of the photon that produces an electron and a positron must be double the energy in MeV. So we need to do 0 0.510999 times two, which gives us an energy in mega electron volts, which is equal to 1.02, 1.9999, MeV. So we, first of all, we need to convert that into joules. So we need to multiply this value by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. Remember, it's not minus 19. You could do minus 19, but then you'd just have an answer in, you know, that wasn't correct. It's the minus 13 because it's mega electron volts. Okay. And that gives us an energy of 1.635. times 10 to the power of minus 13 joules. And then to get the frequency, we just need to use E equals H F. So Planck's constant times the frequency. So our frequency would be the energy of the photon, which we've got above, divided by Planck's constant. So it's just one point 635 times 10 to the minus 13 divided by Planck's constant, which we should know is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So that gives a frequency of 2.47 or 2.5 times 10 to the power of 20 hertz. Hopefully that's okay. If you need to look at any of those calculations again, just feel free to rewind, have another go. And thanks for watching, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.